into the man cave. It's my little piece of paradise that shed down the back of my place. This is where I put all my videos together and all my projects. I just thought I'd um, show you one of those projects before I give you a quick look at the environment that I operate in. Um, it probably looks a little bit chaotic and messy, but I'm um, actually generally know everything is. Uh, some shelving over there, various tools, fridge. You probably guess what's in there. Uh, over this side, more tools, bits and pieces, bench grinder, the all important stereo, speakers up the top there, a bit of safety gear, tools, more tools, power tools, all those boxes, piles and piles of stuff, smaller hand tools on there, uh, Aussie flag, yeah, a bit of a patriot, no apologies for that, a couple of bike pitches, no, it's not too shabby, a little bit of a distraction that, but anyway, and yeah, you guessed it, more tools. Complete pig's breakfast of a mess there. A drop saw, compressor down the bottom there. A little bench saw which I've been using on this project. Um, hidden away down under there is a thicknesser. And, uh, so yeah, pretty well equipped. Basically, my background is a bit of woodworking trade, so it's never had that sort of gear here. What we're going to do is I'll put this thing on the tripod and we'll uh, have a look at the project in question, which involves those bits and pieces there. Back in a moment. Okay, so this project basically is uh, about these little things you can see in front of it here. I've made these from pine, and I'll just give you the background on, on this project. I was watching one of Colin Outdoors videos, and he had the folding legs that mount onto the bottom of the gas canisters. These type of things like you use on the uh, little hiking stoves, like the uh, MSR Pocket Rocket, which is the one that I own. Probably a lot of you guys have got this one too. Um, probably one day should do a review on the MSR Pocket Rocket. What the hell, let's do a review on it right now. The MSR Pocket Rocket, it's bloody good. That's my review on it. Done. It just screws on, of course, as you guys know, and away you go. Great little stuff. Quickest review you'll ever see me do. Alright, right, so back to the leaks. One of the issues with the, with the Pocket Rocket sometimes is stability of these little stoves. And you can buy these legs that fold out free sides and unfortunately on my searching around the internet in Australia I couldn't find anyone that stocks these things but I did find a, vid a web page where a guy was given some instructions on the do-it-yourself solution to the problem and I'll, I'll put that down below in the description have a, have a read of it, it's really interesting stuff and um, off I went, now I didn't have the wooden clothes pegs that he used so I just got some pine, I think it originally was about 19 by 19 I've ripped it down to 12 by 12 uh, all measurements today will be in millimetres. Apologies to those who don't use millimetres, but uh, if you've ever watched my knife reviews and heard me struggle for Imperial or SAE conversions, it doesn't, doesn't go well for me. And the idea of these is that they mount onto the cylinder like that in three, three places. And that means it'll mount down and sit like so. Now I'll talk you through the basics of this. These are 90 millimeters each, I think I made these. You can make them whatever size you want. Yeah, they're 90 mil, depending on cylinder size, etc. The first thing I did after I got down to my, my square section is I put this notch here in. Okay. Now, what that does is that's going to go into that little lip there on the bottom of the cylinder. Now, importantly, you need to also take out, I took out about 3 millimeters from this section here and you can notice there there's a, a difference. Now the reason I had to do that was so that as you can see there it gives you lots of purchase for the tin to sit onto that section there so that's that piece. The other thing I've done you can see I've also notched out a section just here. Now this is going to be for the strapping that I used to secure this around the cylinder which I haven't actually done yet I thought we'd do the video straight after this. Um, in the um, web page that I linked to down below, you'll see there's a few options on how you can do this. I initially, and I'm still going to use, I've got an old hydration pack, and I'm going to use this 20mm webbing off it. Now my first thought was that I would use this little adjuster here, I'd put a loop around it and simply be able to pull tight on it, but I very quickly realised that, as you can see, that doesn't actually move, it's not, not suitable for that type of use, so I'll probably ditch that. And what I might do instead, I've got this other buckle here, and I'm going to cut that out of there. I'll probably take this little portion off here and I'll use that to um, build my strap. And in conjunction with that, I'll use a bit of this Velcro to, to make, I think, what he calls in his link down below there, a sport type wrap. So that should work out pretty well. So I'm going to make a start on that now. And um, 
I'll be doing a little bit of sewing in that, yes, sewing, and I'm going to give a try it to one of them. I made a few of these kits up after seeing Crockett 20's videos, one of my backpack sewing kits, and um, give it a try. A couple of needles in there, some threads, so use the black thread, and I'll get stuck into doing that. So I'm not going to um, bore you to tears by making you watch me sew, well then again I might, little pieces of it, if it's important to how the project progresses. And then once I've got the strap done we'll um, put this on and, and see how it goes. Back soon. Okay, so I've cut that first piece of webbing off. And just put a little bit of flame on the ends just to stop that from fraying. Yeah, that will go around there easily. I'm going to leave that a little bit longer than I need it. You yeah, know, I might use a different brand of cylinder. I think that could be a bit longer. Won't hurt to have a bit of length on that. Now. Yeah. I'm going to have to go off plan B, that first buckle wasn't, uh, wouldn't work for an adjustment, so we'll cut this off, we'll just use the uh, Endura to cut through this, oh, a great knife, don't think I've got around to review on that one yet, everyone else I've been to that, so I probably will myself at some point, okay what I'm going to do with this, is I'm going to use this part here as my adjuster, I will I'll cut this piece of strap off now whilst we're looking at it, get rid of that, so the only part that I want of this particular piece is that bit there. So I'll probably just cut that away in a moment. And the idea is what I'm going to do is run that through there, like so. And I'll stitch that, I'll give it a, probably about an inch. See, I can do imperial measurements. And stitch that up nice and strong. It needs to be really well stitched that. What will happen is this part will come through here. And I'll put some Velcro here. And Velcro here and be able to adjust that and then lock that around the, around the tank. Something like that. You can see that. So that's how it should work as we go around the legs and adjust like that. What I'll have to do of course is once I've got this stitched on is I'll put the legs on and size it up properly. So I only do a bit of sewing, cut that piece away and um, we'll be back for another piece. Okay, quick update on progress. See I trimmed that little buckle down, a little adjuster, and I've now stitched that on. Did a bit of uh, man sewing, as I like to call it, and as you can see I've got probably about 20 mil, about an inch there, and still a little bit of movement, not too tight on that loop. What I've done is I've stitched, hand stitched it there, around each edge, and I had enough thread that I came back up one run back through the middle. Um, on about three occasions whilst doing this I've actually uh, tied the thread off before continuing. The reason that's a good idea is that if it does start to go in one area, once that comes off it'll come up against where you've tied it off and you won't lose the whole thing. So that's a, a bit of a, a sewing tip from Aussie Mark there for what it's worth. Now, I've got the legs set up on the little cylinder. Well at least I had the legs set up on the little cylinder. Try that again. Okay, get them to sit there and see why you need them strapped on. And something like that. Now what I want to do is position this, uh, this strap around them through the, uh, through the notches that I've made for them there. That's it. And as you can see, that's how it's eventually going to go. It's going to hold them on like that. So I just want to measure up. I'm going to leave it probably about um, another 20 mil inch, whatever you want to call it here, um, just as a loose end and I need some velcro in that area there and it looks like I'm going to need probably a run of uh, probably 60 mil velcro so what I'll do is I'll cut 60 mil of this stuff and um, stitch there and there and uh, we'll go from there work it out I just wonder if I should run right through the buckle one thing I may have to do um, to modify this perhaps is if the velcro is a little it's going to make this strap wider to get it through there I might have to take a, um, a section of that out just to allow the velcro to slide through that adjuster I also want to be able to just pull the strap out and not have it permanently looped I think it might be handy to be able to, to pull it all the way out so I can always modify that buckle to do that I guess right so I'll cut the velcro stitch that on and um, be back Okay, we're back. The miracle of time lapse. It seems like that took me no time at all. But it's probably about 15 minutes work stitching those two pieces of Velcro on. Down towards the buckle end, I've put the hook side of the Velcro, and at the end here, I've put the um, the furry side. 
the reason I did it that way um, is when you're putting it through the buckle, I suspect that it's probably better to put this side through that, that tight plastic than this because I think you could damage the hook side. That's just my theory and I'm sticking to it until someone proves it otherwise. So we'll throw this around here and strap this up, see if it works. I actually haven't tried this before putting the camera on so it's going to be pretty embarrassing if I got this wrong. Oh, that feels alright. Probably could have put that a little bit further around, but that's okay. Just tighten that up a little bit more. That works really well, actually. And that's it. Yeah. Looks good. Now, I've got something a bit heavy here, which I'm going to have to support it just to hold it on. This thing weighs in at um, a bit of a four kilos, about nine pounds, this jack. I'll just balance that on top there. No problem, that's holding that easy. It's certainly. That big old jack so I think I'm going to be cooking on my little stove. Now the benefit of this idea, and I'm sure you guys have probably already read the article by the gentleman whose idea I've used here, is that with only three points of contact, um, it doesn't matter if, you know, if I put my hand under there, so it's out, it's still quite stable. Anyone who's done any sort of furniture building or something will know that if you build a stool with three legs, it doesn't matter if one of the legs or even you know, they're all three different lengths. Legs, they'll still sit. That's that's why tripods work so well. As soon as you put a fourth leg on, everything's got to be spot on or you tend to get that wobble. So, yeah, that's that's pretty good. Um, the only other mod I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll either clear coat these or I might paint them. Probably a nice tactic cool black. Wish I'd jury coat. I could jury coat them. That'd be pretty cool. But, um, yeah, we'll give that a bit of field testing. But that's probably a quick and easy, simple solution if you're looking to um, get a bit more stability on your little cylinders and everything. And uh, yeah, quite pleased with that. All right, thanks for watching. Um, if any of you guys um, have a similar idea or a better idea or want to share, I'd love to see some uh, comments, maybe a response video. Um, one thing I was going to mention is the reason I've done this out of wood is basically, as mentioned, that's kind of my trade background. I've got all the tools and, and gear to do it that way. But I would suspect if you guys, any of you guys are good metal workers, maybe aluminium would work well. Um, some of you guys who do um, Kydex knife shoes, you could probably just about somehow figure out a way to make something like that out of Kydex. I'd be really intrigued to see um, some response videos um, maybe showing some of those sorts of options and variations. I think that'd be really, really great. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Take it easy. Bye for now.